I've had this weird ambition to implement violin plots in Excel uh, natively without any plugins, uh, and I finally figured out how to do it. Now, it goes without saying that if you want to do this repetitively and easily, I mean, there's brush options like R and ggplot that will do it, uh, and there are extensions for Excel that will do it. Uh, I just didn't bother to download it. So I thought, okay, well, let's figure out how to do it uh, and learn a bit about how you would actually construct these from scratch. So what is a violin plot anyway? Uh, well, let's start with some data. We've got these randomish numbers between zero and 100. Our first port of call would be a box plot. Uh, this tells us where the median is, it's this line, and then the box represents half the data. So 25% in this part of the box, 25% in that. And the whiskers, all the error bar things that are pointing out here, go to your maximum and minimum value, uh, or maximum and minimum value uh, excluding some outliers as well. So these plots in Excel, they, they do exist as a default option. They're not, uh, they're not great in being super flexible in their formatting or their look, but they do accept uh, just the raw data and they calculate outliers for you. So pretty good starting point. But if we look at this data that I've got, well, there seems to be actually two clusters, somewhere around 75 and somewhere around 45-ish. And you can see that from the violin plot because this line here kind of represents the local density of the data. If there's more data up here, it's a bit wider. There's not as much data down here, so it's narrower. And I've also plotted the data points with a bit of scatter, so they're a bit more scattered where they are denser. There are probably better ways of doing that, but that's just random for now. So that's what a violin plot is. It is showing you the kind of the distribution, the probability distribution, the density uh, of the data uh, on this plot. And it's a way that the box plot itself wouldn't convey. So how are we going to build this line? How do we build this density? Well, it's using something called KDE, kernel density estimation, uh, where each data point kind of has a something called a kernel attached to it. It's basically a function of a particular shape. I'm just going to use the normal distribution. Other shapes are available. Normal distribution is probably fine, though. And what you can see is we just add all of them together. So where these dotted lines curve, for instance, uh, overlap, for instance, this bigger, darker line uh, is much higher. So if we move the data around a bit, maybe I'll bring 35. I'll change that to bring that up to about 80. You can see that line moves up to here, it gets a bit thicker. Uh, so this graph here is basically based on something on Wikipedia, uh, except this version is uh, interactive. And we can also change the width of each of those uh, curves as well. So it can get a bit spikier or it can get a bit broader. So that's the, the main idea. We need a normal distribution for each of these data points, centered on each of these data points, and we're going to add them all together to build uh, this function here, the dark line. Right, so I'm going to do that. I've got some data. Uh, I think this is actually National Student Survey data, so it's, it's real. Uh, it has an actual distribution. It's not necessarily normally distributed, and we're going to see what it looks like. Uh, the first thing, I'm going to try and make a defined range for this data. So I'm going to use oh, the oof, the offset function. And I want string dollar a dollar one for that. I'm not going to offset it or move it around from that point. So the next two things are zero, zero. And the height, I'm using count a dollar a colon dollar. A again. So just the count of whatever is that column. And then width, may as well say that that is one. So this now will get all the data. And if I'd happen to put another number on the bottom, it'll grab that number as well. Great fun so far. So I'm going to copy that code, come into my name manager define a new thing. I'll just scope it to the workbook for now. I'm going to call it data. Paste the code in there. So now, if I'm referring to my data named range, I've got all of these numbers. If I add a new one, it'll appear in this data set as well. 
set lit up now. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start building a normal distribution for these data points and then summing them up. So I'm going to do sequence, just 100 rows. Now this is going up on the y-axis. So for every point here, I'm going to calculate how wide this graph should be. So I'm going to leave this on the right because it's eventually going to be a y-axis, but it is sort of our, our kind of dependent variable when we're plotting a normal distribution. So I'm going to write norm.dist and our x, it's kind of it's the input of the distribution, is going to be oops, not j1. Uh, I want that sequence. I press hash to select all of it. Now the mean, I want a piece of our data. I'm just going to select one of the numbers for now. Standard deviation, I'll do it as five. Doesn't really matter for now. This is illustrative. False, because I want the probability distribution from the normal distribution, not a cumulative thing. So if I return that, you can see the number is very low, around one, 10 to the minus 16, in fact. Uh, when we hit 40-ish, because that is where uh, that data point is centered, it gets much higher, and then it's going to tail off to lower numbers again. And we can see, if we insert a graph of that, I'm going to insert a scatter graph with a smooth line, tidy it up a bit, get rid of the chart title, Oops, some of the little grid lines. Set the axis to just go between 0 and 100 to tidy that up. Uh, possibly chance to delete the x-axis, we don't need it. We can see there's a little normal distribution, a little bump at about 40-something. And if I change that to 70, it will redraw the normal distribution a bit higher. Okay, so we now need one of these for every single data point. And that's a bit trickier because we can't just substitute that for, say, data because kind of a weird behavior now starts happening. Uh, it's kind of really jaggeded. And if we scroll down, we realize it stops. So what this is doing is it's recalculating the normal distribution for each of these inputs, but changing the mean each time. Uh, we also can't simply just wrap it in a sum function to add them up because, well, let's put the data thing back in. You just get one number count. Sometimes it doesn't even work properly because we are dealing with problems there. So what are we going to do? First of all, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to introduce a function called by row. So this is going to solve some of the summation problems that we might have. Because what we're going to do is calculate how big this density estimate is for every single point by summing things up. So I'm going to do by row. And the array that I'm doing in uh, by is this input here. I'll put it in column i. Um, so i1 hash. And the function is a lambda function. So I need to define that as lambda first. And then the parameter I'm going to say is x. So this is like uh, the lambda function becomes here. So this becomes like the input here. So uh, now what is my function going to be? Well, I'm going to do the sum of various normal distributions. So the norm dist here, well, the input is going to be x. And I want to figure out what the distribution is for that x point by summing up over all the data. So my mean is, in fact, going to be data. So for every single data point, I'm going to calculate what the normal distribution would be at that point x, add them all up. And then it's going to do that for every row in my series. So the standard deviation, I'm just going to call that 4, false for now, and make sure I can close enough brackets to end that. And what we see is we've got not so much a violin as a little bit of a Christmas tree, right? If I change my standard deviation to two, uh, it gets a bit spikier. So I don't know what I can put over here. I'll just put over here, and I might define that name as smoothing. I'll scope it to the worksheet. Uh, I can replace two here with smoothing. And here we are. 
Now I can just change the visual of it by broadening that out if I wanted to. So that's the density. Now if I want to make that classic violin plot shape, well, I'm going to make equals the negative of that, actually, each one. Hash. And I'm going to add new data. So first of all, I'm going to edit that series and just say, uh, call it line plus, and then line minus our x values are that entire column and the y values are that entire column going up. So what I'm seeing now is that kind of double-sided violin plot. Change the number. Oop, formats that to be blue. And yeah, make sure the blues match. There we go. So there's my shape. So how do you fill it in? That's the question, because on here I've filled it in. Uh, it would be lovely if you want to do it the other way, 90 degrees. Uh, we do have area charts. Let's just stick this in. Uh, so let's just stick this in for a second. If we looked at charts, we might have things like, um, where are they? Areas, but unfortunately they only work horizontally. So we're going to have to be a little bit more challenging. So what I'm going to do is add two new things. I'm going to do bar plus, doesn't matter what this is for now, because I'm going to change it, and then bar minus. Because what I'm going to do is hack it with a bar chart. So chart design, change chart type. And what I want to go is combo. And I need to make sure that the line is still that scatter with smooth lines and the bars need to be stacked bar charts if I uh, have to play with the axis settings to make it work because I can't put the stacked bar charts on the the same axis so there we go they're at least set to the right chart type Excuse me, I'll just delete. Oop, there we go so I'm now going to select my data and check what these bars are going to be. Well, bar plus it now only needs uh, one set of values. I'm going to put in all my positives here. Okay, that bar minus. Can put the negative sides in. And what you can see now is I'm kind of starting to shade that in. Just delete my y-axis. And if I format the data series, drop that gap width to zero. It applies to everything. Now let's shape fill with a lighter blue. Okay, so we're nearly there. But what you can probably see if you zoom in is the line and the bars are not quite aligned slightly. So the easy hack for this one is to change the sequence and minus 0.5 off it. Because what we're going to do is that we'll shunt this line slightly, almost imperceptibly, uh, and put it on top of the bars instead. If you zoom in really far, you'll be able to see it. So what we could also do is turn this into sequence 200 and divide it by two. That means things become a little bit finer. You could increase that to a thousand divided by 10 or something like that, and it could become even finer. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter, but we can leave it there for now. So now there, we have our plot. Now, if we want to start adding something else to it, I can put, um, let's put the average, no, it's not average, average of my data. And I'm gonna add a new thing here. So if I put series name, I'm gonna call it average, x value, zero, the y value is that number there. Okay, that. And if I go back to my chart design, change chart type, I can make sure my average is now just a scatter. And I've got myself a central point. And what I can also do is maybe let's do standard deviation. I'll do this population of just data. I think with this many, the probably the difference between standard deviation, population, and sample will be uh, bordering on negligible. So 
let's add format the data series. No, it's not format data series, plus uh, some error bars. More options for here. Uh, custom the value. Oops. Yeah, that's the one I want. Y error bar, specify the value. Let's put the standard deviation in there. And delete the horizontal because I don't really need it. So what we've got there is our violin pont uh, natively built uh, in a spreadsheet. And if we start changing some of the data, it will, you know, let, let's, let's change some of these to random numbers that are quite small and we'll watch. I'll watch it start to build up some density at the bottom, uh, which you can then spot because of this. Um, it's a little bit more powerful, that box plot. So let's get rid of those for a second, send it back. Oh, it's National Student Survey data. I'm pleased to see that not many are scoring uh, below 20. So, you know, uh, what was this? I can't remember what score this is, but it is, it's real data and that's how it's distributed.